a very good afternoon to all of you hello jason i hope you all can hear me clearly and see my screen good afternoon gamer or jema whichever way you pronounce your name let's start with today's work today we are going to continue with the topic that we took up in the last class that is the idea of consonants and reson uh, consonants and dissonance and the next topic that we will do is we will discuss the effect of phase on timbre and then finally we will take up some problems from the chapter good afternoon nimeshka good afternoon roshel so i hope you all are well let's go ahead with this work today and after the class we can meet in google meet to discuss a few things which you feel are worth discussing in which you have any doubts or questions so consonants and dissonance we discussed in the last class if you remember the consonant sounds are the sounds which will appear pleasant to human ear when they are presented dissonant sounds are the sounds which when they are played simultaneously they will not appear pleasant so remember we had talked about there is a ratio in fact i'm talking about pure tones so two pure tones if they appear in these ratios they sound pleasant or unpleasant depending upon their ratio so if it's 2 is to 1 that's most pleasant or most consonant sound and if it is 2 is to 1 is normally called as octave or an octave octave apart the word octave he were here comes from the music those who know those who are there those who have the musical background learning etc or even if you are casually interested in music then we know that there are seven steps in the music at the eighth step the frequency repeats or frequency is at a double so that's an octave but there are other ratios also which are also very important where also the consonants will happen of course it will be less consonants so we have discussed these ratios remember it starts with 2 is to 1 and tend towards 1 is to 1 so the ratio goes on decreasing and the consonants also goes on decreasing these are the historical findings the modern day theories are slightly different i'll come to it i think in the last class we heard some of these examples so octave perfect fifth perfect fourth and this was perfect sixth if you remember i will just play for the reference once again we have already heard this in the last class but for the sense of completeness it is needed that we play it once again and listen to it first two is to one that is octave well here i am playing these two one by one alternately you can see that you can 
distinguish between them very clearly although when I was showing the previous slide I did tell you that when the notes are played simultaneously so in fact you need to you can try this in audacity you can put the two frequencies two tracks simultaneously and play them and try to feel their impact now going to perfect fifth Perfect fourth. And as I said, the last is perfect sixth. You can see that in all these cases I have kept one frequency fixed at 200, 200, 200 while the other one is decreasing. Remember I am choosing this, these range of frequencies because these are the range of frequencies which are generated by human, uh, human vocal cords. So depending on whether it's a male or female vocal cord you will get anywhere in this range of frequencies in the next chapter or the forthcoming unit that we are going to talk about is going to talk about sound generation and there we will learn more about it right now we are in the unit of psychoacoustics or how do we perceive sound so sound perception is the central theme so today we will look at the causes of consonance and dissonance what has been observed is that if there are two pure tones, the modern of practical observation and experimental results show a very different idea than what music theory predicts. The music theory says that if the musical tones are in some ratios, they will sound consonant. What modern day practical observations say that it is not on their ratio that is very important but what is more important is the frequency difference it's a much simpler idea that two tones are played their difference in the frequency decides whether they are consonant or dissonant so what decides in their difference if they are consonant or dissonant so if the frequency difference between two tones is greater than a critical band recall critical band we did in the very first chapter the one of the most central idea in first unit is critical band so if your frequency difference between the two tones which are playing if they are greater than the critical band or critical band frequency then they sound consonant and if they are less than the critical band then they will sound dissonant or they will be unpleasant and we have already discussed this in some context of beats in the same chapter chapter 8 that when the beats are playing when the two frequencies are very close then you get a fused frequency but if the two frequencies are separated by some distance in frequency scale then you get a rough patch or rough note or rough tone Finally, if they, when they are much separated, then they get independent and they are heard again clearly. So, it is more or less similar to that, that if the two pure tones are playing on one single critical band, they sound consonant. And if they are on two different critical bands, then they sound dissonant. The maximum dissonance that happens now the question is consonants will happen when they are two critical bands but when they are coming on to the same critical band then when does the maximum dissonance happens 
so very beautiful experimental results are available i would recommend you to read it through the reference book the maximum dissonance happens at a difference of approximately one fourth of the critical bandwidth so when the critical bandwidth is one fourth when the difference in the two frequencies is one fourth of the critical bandwidth then the dissonance or the maximum dissonance will happen so here is the graph which actually plots consonants on the y-axis and the fraction of the critical bandwidth on the x-axis so consonance is maximum or dissonance is minimum here so consonance is maximum when the two frequencies are very close so on the same critical band and consonance is maximum once again here when the two frequencies are separated by one critical band so or one critical bandwidth so these are the two consonance point maximum consonance or minimum dissonance now as you decrease the frequency difference between the two the consonance goes on decreasing and dissonance goes on increasing now where is the consonance minimum or dissonance maximum the answer is it happens around 0.25 or around 25 percent you can take it 25 percent of the critical bandwidth so if the critical bandwidth is 100 then if the difference between the two frequencies are 25 then in that case there will be least consonant or maximum dissonant that's how these happen now this is an experimental result averaged over many people from the trained listener these scales are also rationalized sorry normalized scales between 0 and 1 critical bandwidth but what happens to critical bandwidth if you recall the critical bandwidth table the critical bandwidth goes on increasing with frequency if you remember at the lower frequency the critical bandwidth is around 90 hertz for quite a period and then it increases slowly for around 500 hertz the central frequency 500 hertz the critical bandwidth increases to 110 and then it goes beyond further increasing now that creates a very peculiar situation the critical bandwidth is changing so the de degree of dissonance between two pure tones becomes a function of its position on the musical scale so the two pure tones if they are situated say a particular location say on the lower side then they may sound dissonance but the same two frequencies located elsewhere on the frequency scale may sound consonant so that happens because the critical bandwidth changes with central frequencies so for example I have an example here to deal with it so suppose if I have two pure tones one is 262 Hertz and one is 392 Hertz if you look at the ratio the ratio is 2 is to 3 and it falls in the category of perfect fifth let me take another ratio 131 Hertz and 196 Hertz and if you take the ratio again it goes in that approximately in the same ratio 2 is to 3 again it is perfect fifth now I ask the key question that if these two tones are played simultaneously and if these two tones are played simultaneously and remember I'm using the word simultaneously then which of the two tones would be more consonant which of the two tones would be less consonant Remember, they both are perfect fifth. They are the same ratio. But still, 
their degree of consonance will differ depending upon their position on the scale so the answer lies in the fact that if you look at the difference in the two frequencies here it's around 130 hertz ratio is 2 by 3 now critical bandwidth at around 130 hertz around 100 hertz around those frequencies is 90 hertz constant now the difference in the two frequencies here which are playing being played is 130 hertz which is greater than critical bandwidth which is 90 by 40 percent that means one frequency would be heard by one part on the bacillar membrane while the second frequency will be heard by entirely different region on the bacillar mem membrane so they will be heard clearly and there will be much more consonant or consonants in these two frequency what happens here so if you look at this and this the difference is only 65 remember the ratio is still the same but here the difference is 130 here difference 65 now difference is 65 means on the critical bandwidth it is less than the critical bandwidth the critical bandwidth is 90 this is 65 this is all around 70 percent of the critical bandwidth that means if you go to the previous slide then in this figure it's 0.7 somewhere here so in the second example which i had given the first example the two frequencies are at two different critical bands so they will be completely consonants or zero dissonance but the second example the two frequencies are 70 percent of the critical band and therefore they will be somewhere here they will be less consonants and more dissonant frequencies so let's this will be less consonant so i have two frequencies with us i am going to play try to listen to it although i am not too sure how good my laptop speakers are to produce 131 hertz it's a rather a low frequency for the mobile or laptop or mobile speakers to produce but nevertheless we can give it a try wait so first i'm going to play this combination 130 hertz and sorry 262 hertz and 392 hertz combination and we are going to see how clearly they are heard independently And now I'm going to play 131 hertz and 196 hertz and see that difference that they are not as they would be heard independently but they are not as independently heard as the case in this. So let us check that. So I repeat once again as usual for the reference. So first 260 to 392. Next. Oh, so yeah so consonants and dissonance 
now has been well understood in terms of difference in the two frequencies and not in the ratio scientifically but still that question remains that why does music industry now it has been experimentally shown results are clear that it is the difference in the two frequencies that matters and not the ratios then why does the music industry still sticks to the ratio of the two frequencies so if any one of you have that any quest thought about it you can either comment or we can have it in the post lecture discussion so let's go ahead now here i would like to stop with consonants and dissonance and start with the next idea that is effect of phase on timber by the way somebody have wished me good afternoon good afternoon and i can't make out the name it is some cryptic name j d n d j d f h f j d d j something like that fairly a tongue twisting name okay nevertheless good afternoon effect of phase on timber timber you are all familiar it gives the quality of sound the quality of sound depends on a number of harmonics so we have already seen that if there are certain number of harmonics the quality will change what we are going to explore in this section is that you keep the harmonics same so let's have the same set of harmonics but change their phase angle change their relative phase relationship and if we do that can we make the sound sound differently that is the whole idea that means if we have different waveforms which have the same harmonic spectrum so your same number of harmonics or same frequencies are present but their phases are different would the sound different answer is yes i have an example of four combination of waves and remember you can try all these in audacity audacity has a function a drop down menu called generate then you can go to generate tone section and you can generate a sine wave of any given frequency and amplitude so that you can do there and remember there is a there is an add track go to track menu and say add track maybe i can show you towards the end of the lecture there you can add as many tracks as possible and then you can shift or delay tracks forward or backward to create different combinations so yeah let's me focus on this first one is sin omega t frequency omega second one is 2 omega so frequency is 2 omega third one is 3 omega and then is 10 omega so first 10 terms of the spectrum are given now this is a cos cos omega t cos 2 omega so everything is shifted by phase 90 degree so everything is shifted so relative phase is same so whatever is the phase between this and this i'm sorry whatever is the phase difference between this and this same is the phase difference between this and this so relative phases are same but they are all shifted from here to here it shifted by 90 degree nothing much so again 10 terms now in this case i have the first term as sin omega t but the second term is cos omega cos 2 omega 2t so it's a double frequency remember the frequency is increasing 2 omega 3 omega up to 10 omega here the frequency is increasing but since it has shifted from sin to cos what does it mean it has some implication on the phase angle remember when you shift from sin to cos the phase angle changes by 90 degree or pi by 2 so you have a pi by 2 phase switch then this is same as this but again next term has a pi by 2 phase switch then this is same i mean here again 
this is a phase switch so and from this to this again the first term is retained the next term is phase switch phase switch uh, not here but the next term here and so on and so forth so how would the resultant waveform look like and how would the sound look like so you all know that this is a sawtooth waveform so this is my sawtooth waveform look like if i add all the signs together if i add all the cos together the waveform would look somewhat like this however if you hear these two sounds actual practical sounds then these two sounds are going to be identical they are not going to differ much from each other so they are going to be identical but if you take the last two component here then they sound very differently not only their waveform pattern changes drastically but their sounds are also going to be different so these two are going to sound much different than these two now look at this on the whole you have same harmonic this is fundamental second third up to 10 you have the same amplitude ratio 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 up to 1 by 10 but what is differing that you are differing from sign to cos or cos to sign that means what you are differing is the phase angle since you are differing the phase angle you are actually changing the shape of the resultant waveform and therefore the resultant sound also so this is a beautiful demonstration of effect of phase on timber in fact it's a beautiful project idea or project work you can create all these waveforms with suitable phase differences in audacity and create these final answers so what is the final results let me just quickly read through the maximum effect of phase on timber is the difference between a complex tone in which the harmonics are in phase and one in which the alternate harmonics differ by 90 so these are the maximum effect on timber it comes when the alternate harmonics are deferred by phase by 90 we differ in phase by 90 degree and that was what the, our equations read through the effect of lowering each successive harmonic by 2 db is greater than the maximum phase effect described above so lowering the successive amplitude successive pressure level of harmonics will bring more uh, maximize the phase effect the effect of phase on timber appears to be independent of sound level and the spectrum so it does not depend on the spectrum so yeah with this we have finished almost all the relevant topics of discussion in the eighth chapter a few topics i have left which are more uh, related to musical theories i leave those topics of for you who are interested in reading through musical theories then you are you must go through them otherwise you can skip them and focus on what has been covered in the lectures now towards the last part let's go to the problems i am presenting my first problem of the day if anyone can address it perhaps can try and give me an answer the lowest fifth on a piano is 27.5 hertz to 41.2 hertz by applying the criteria for roughness of plomp and levit show why it sounds less pleasant than a fifth from a4 to e5 forget that fifth from 440 hertz to 660 hertz so basically 
you take two ratios 27.5 and 41.2 and two other frequencies 440 and 660 hertz what is asked is why does this these two frequencies when played simultaneously sound less pleasant than these two which are played simultaneously once again and for reference we have this graph in fact this graph is what is called as plomp and leveled criteria they have a formula also related to uh, this graph formula which gives this graph you can check the reference book for that so yeah anyone can answer or can anyone answer this question quickly this is depending on the concepts that we have just developed now to answer this question you will need the knowledge of critical bands and I can hint that that critical band in this region 27 to 41 Hertz is around 90 Hertz critical bandwidth critical bandwidth in this region is at a central frequency of 500 is around 110 Hertz so that hint I can give so think about the answer you all must prepare or you must memorize the table of critical bands for the exam if any question is given where the requirement of critical band at a particular frequency is needed that table or that information will not be provided the critical bands table and graph you all must memorize that's very important please remember that it is less than the critical band then it then hence dissonance uh, yes Nimishka perhaps one can clarify yes Nimishka that is a better clarification it's almost one four fourth of the critical band look at the figure this is 27.5 and this is 41 so what is the difference so if you observe carefully 27 37 41 11 11 or 12 or say 11 hertz difference now if you have if your critical bandwidth is 90 then 11 hertz will fall somewhere here somewhere in this part so you are towards the bottom of this curve consonance curve and that's why this is going to sound much less pleasant while if you are in the range of 440 hertz to 660 hertz the difference is 220 hertz now remember at around 500 the critical bandwidth is around 110 hertz and here the difference is a whooping 220 hertz much larger so you are on two different critical bands you are beyond this point and that is why these two sounds will sound more pleasant this will sound much less pleasant so thank you Nimishka let's go to the next problem quickly pure tones with frequencies 440 and 448 hertz are sounded together describe what is heard you will hear a rough tone fused tone beats what do you get do the same for tones with frequencies of 440 and 432 hertz so what do you hear in each case would it be a rough tone would it be a beats formation fused tone or would they be heard independently So anyone I think this is an easier question than the previous one people should respond to this quickly
one is 440 other one is 448 so yeah if you remember we have done that experiment if the two frequencies are less than say roughly around 15 Hertz then you will hear the fused frequency and the beats will be formed yes Aditya yes Nimishka your guess is right beats will be formed and here what will be the beat frequency so beat frequency is 440 and 448 difference and that is 8 Hertz that is 8 beats per second are heard clearly it's audible what will happen in the second case second case again you will see the difference is still 8 Hertz so you will again get the beats only even in the second case okay so remember but I re repeat the theory the idea of solving problems is to revise the theory as the frequency between the two will go beyond 15 Hertz and remember it's not a very uh, figure uh, written in stone depends on people to people it varies on an average if the difference grows beyond 15 Hertz that means if it is 440 and it's beyond 455 then you will get you will not hear beats but you will hear some rough tone rough notes rough tone mixed one but rough tones you will hear until unless and until the difference crosses the critical bandwidth once the difference crosses the critical bandwidth then you will hear the two tones once again very clearly going ahead calculate the first three difference frequencies that result from f1 as 900 hertz and f2 as 1000 hertz so you have to calculate the difference frequencies if you remember we have already discussed this difference tones there are three four the number of different tones subsequent or different tones will have very less amplitude so to hear all of them we should have a very strong amplitude to begin with so one of the different tones we have already heard it is f2 minus f1 so if 900 hertz and 1000 hertz are played together then f2 minus f1 will be heard very clearly that is 100 hertz this you can even try at home take two tone generator apps place these two frequencies together and you will hear a third 100 hertz tone but you will hear these tones also 2f1 minus f2 so 2f1 is 1800 1800 minus f2 will give you 800 hertz and 3f1 2700 2f2 2000 2700 minus 2000 will give you 700 hertz so these are the various different tones you are going to hear remember this is the strongest one and the others are too feeble and unless and until you are very cautious and unless and until the amplitudes are very strong you may not hear them so next one square waves of 200 and 301 hertz are sounded together how many beats are heard anyone very quickly write out the harmonics of each tone and indicate harmonics that might beat with harmonics of the other tone do the same for the sawtooth waves at these frequencies can the second order beats be explained as beats between harmonics of the two tones so what is the answer to the first question how many beats are heard so whatever discussion we have just done you will notice that square waves if these are the square waves 200 and 300 so square waves when you are solving it look at the frequencies which are present in the square waves so square waves have odd harmonics 200 is there 
Now 200 and 300 will not form any beat because they are much separated. No nimishka. That's the whole point. That at critical bandwidth at 200 is 90 hertz. They are they are, the difference in the two frequencies is greater than the critical bandwidth. They will not form beats. I mean, even for heaven's sake, if they form beats, you will not be able to hear 101 beats per second. So you will hear some rough sound only. But they don't. <coughs> they fall on two different critical, ba uh, critical bands and they are heard independently. So no beat formation in the fundamental. This problem is there to figure out that if the harmonics can form beats, so square wave of 200 hertz will have odd harmonics. Next harmonic will be at 600, 2 into 3. And after that, the next harmonics will be at uh, 2 into 5, that is 1000. And the next harmonic will be 2 into 7, 1400. What about the harmonics of 301? So third harmonic will be 903. Would it form any harmonic, any beat with any of the harmonics of the square wave? Answer is no. Square wave harmonics are at 600 and 1000. They will not. So next harmonic will be 1500. Would it form a beat with 1400? Answer is it may. Check out the critical bandwidth. The critical bandwidth increases as the frequency increases. So the third harmonic from here or, or, or the fourth harmonic from here may form a beat with the third harmonic from here. And that is how to that is how you make the judgment. So remember when the complex tones are playing then fundamentals even if they may not form a beat with each other their harmonics somewhere can form beats with each other and that can affect the music so a good musician must be aware of these complications these are called second order beats do the same for sawtooth wave at these frequencies so now sawtooth wave they have all the frequencies present so just write them down the frequencies and calculate if they are close enough falling in the same critical band they will produce a beat. So check that part as well. When an AM radio station amplitude modulates a carrier wave of 800 kilohertz with a signal sorry with a single pure tone of 1000 hertz what are the principal sideband frequencies? I suppose people can answer this fairly easy. Nothing is challenging in this. So you have AM carrier frequency 800 kilohertz. You have modulating frequency 1000 hertz. You have to calculate sidebands. So yes very easy to answer this your if your side carrier is fc and this is fm then it is fc plus fm and fc minus fm these are the first sideband frequencies and fc plus 2 fm fc minus 2 fm are second sideband frequencies they are weak as you go to the third and fourth they are going to be much weaker so 800 kilo plus 1000 hertz this is 1 kilohertz so it will become 801 kilohertz as a higher sideband 799 as a lower sideband so these are the two sidebands here yes aditya that is the answer for the previous question i guess no not this one Nothing like 200. 800 kilohertz. Make a note of this. This is not 800 hertz. So 800 kilohertz and this is 1 kilohertz. So we have to put the units at the same value. 
then your side bands become 801 and 799 these are the first side band on either side and second side band on either side would be 802 and 798 kilohertz the second side band will have much lesser amplitude so with this we finish this uh, particular chapter 2 please any problems which are there for assignment from this chapter add it to the second assignment when you submit that okay I think that clarification we have already given so let's stop this lecture over here thank you very much let's meet in the Google meet